Denver Broncos and the Tennessee Titans. It is three across the board in favor of Tennessee Titans. It is a 37 and a half all the way to a 38 and a half from a total perspective. Boys, what we get here is it looks like it's Ryan Tannehill. Full practice. Everybody says that he is going to give it a go. That's why this moved off of the two and a halfs, which were available on Thursday. And we're sitting at three now. Uh, Still a ridiculously low total. It is the Broncos coming off of a bye, Steven. So there is something to be said for that. I mean, here's the thing. Do I have any confidence in this coaching staff to, you know, magically figure things out? You know, where's they come out and look like a completely different team? I do not have that. However, they cannot be worse, right? They have to, they can, oh, there's only up to go for this Broncos team coming out of the bye here. And in a game in which we are getting a total, of just 37 and a half, 38. And, and Tannehill, even if he goes, right, he's not 100%. He was talking about that earlier in the week, about how the ankle is still not enough to where he feels super mobile and all that. We know the Broncos' defense has shown up every single week and is really, really good. Um, I, it's a Broncos or pass for me, and I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's a, it's a Broncos or pass for me. And if you wanted to put the Broncos in a teaser leg, which – this guy did up to eight and a half in a game with a 38 total. I think that's a pretty strong play as well. First of all, major hat tip to Adam for hitting the nail on the head with the Titans covering a big number last week. I could not have been more wrong about that game with Malik Willis starting there. So kudos to you, sir. And I think I still might have a blind spot on the Titans because I've already bet Denver to cover the spread at plus three. And if you take out the two weeks with Malik Willis at quarterback, The Titans are still 23rd in EPA, 28th in success rate, outside the top 20 in rush EPA and success rate. The yards per play metrics suggest a similar ranking, and they're playing a Denver defense that is number one in yards per play allowed, number two in EPA and success rate. And a Tennessee offensive line has had pass protection issues. They are 27th in pass block win rate. So uh, the Broncos offense is not encouraging, but the Titans defense is still number 21 in yards per play allowed. Overall, I think if you look at their EPA and success rate metrics, they're being bolstered by an elite rushing defense, but they still have major issues on the back end facing the passing defense. So, man, I I am really sick and tired of betting Russell Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett, but you make the Titans a favorite in this game by three and with a, a total this low when they have the superior unit on the field, in my opinion, in this Denver defense. And I got to take the, the Broncos to cover this three. Adam, we take a look and like, I mean, I don't, I don't know if the regression is going to come this year or ever. Uh, The Broncos offense, no matter what, if you think it's a bad game plan, if you think Russ is, is on the severe downside of his career, if you think any of this stuff, which, you know, all again might be true. I don't think if we really are honest with ourselves that they're the, you know, a bottom five offense in all of the NFL. I mean, DVOA right now, they are 27th. According to pro football folks, they're 31st. It would be the second worst offense in all of the NFL. I'm not saying something magically happened in this bye week, but like if if you have any, if you, if, if, if we're sitting here, Nathaniel Hackett has any hope of being an NFL coach for the long term and not getting fired, not being a one and done or something like that for this Denver team you have to think something gets figured out because I mean, just the talent alone, they can't be the second worst offense in all the NFL. No, you would think they couldn't be the second worst (laughs) offense in the NFL, but I also didn't think Aaron Rodgers could be so affected by the loss of one receiver. I didn't think Mm -hmm. Tom Brady's offense could fall apart with the loss of a couple of offensive linemen, but here we are. Uh, These are the things that have happened this year. And so, uh, I'm going to pass on this game, even though my lean is to Tennessee. Uh, if this happens to somehow get back to mm-hmm. two and a half, which I don't know why it would, but if it gets back to two and a half, I love your teaser leg because look, that's as system of system play as could be possible. If this is the way you like to play teasers, right? You're getting eight and a half in a game with a total of 37 and a half. And frankly, mm-hmm. at one point you could have gotten 36 and a half before Ryan Tannehill uh, was ruled likely to play in this game. So Ultimately, I don't have a lot to add to that other than the fact that 
at some point we have to believe the metrics with Tennessee a little bit. And mm. I look at the fact that this team can do some things very well and look at the fact that rushing is not the albatross that it has been in past years and say that. That's you know, what Tennessee's- I wanted to ask you, Adam. That's why I feel like my blind spot is because we care so much about passing or whatnot. But if you watch the Titans with your eyes, it's clear that Derrick Henry taking souls into the fourth quarter and making it really hard to tackle him and then being so effective running the ball is the area where like people like me might have a blind spot with the Titans and not giving that enough value in terms of the physicality of the rushing game. Sure. And I think it's hard to factor in something like, you know, talking about physicality when it comes to figuring out you know, the handicap of these things. I can keep going with the, with the metrics that we use. Right. And, and the fact that, Tennessee is, as you mentioned, is elite stopping the run and is elite running the ball. Uh, Is Denver the team to take advantage of whatever weakness Tennessee has in the back end? Patrick Mahomes threw the ball 68 times and had one touchdown in the game against Tennessee. So at some point, even though I don't really believe in the names on the back of the jerseys, I have to trust the numbers that I've seen. 